three, two, one, mission. Engines full power. And lift off. Go Falcon, go Kuiper. Vehicle is pitching downrange. Stage one propulsion is not. Plus 30 seconds and counting, Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. In just a few seconds, we'll throttle the engines down in preparation for Max-Q, the period of maximum aerodynamic pressure. To help go from vertical to horizontal, the first stage performed a pitch kick just after liftoff, about 10 seconds into flight, which is a maneuver known as a gravity turn. The engines gimbal a small amount, and that slowly turns the first stage from going straight up. Falcon 9 is supersonic. Going horizontal with the help of gravity. And eventually, we'll be roughly horizontal to Earth as we achieve orbit. Max Q. And there's the callout for Max Q. Continuing on the timeline, everything's looking good. The rocket typically needs to go 17,500 miles per hour horizontally in order to avoid being pulled back down to Earth and get into orbit. You can track our progress to orbit by watching the left corner of your display. That's going to show us the first stage velocity and altitude. Now we have several events coming up in quick succession, and we should hear all of these called out by mission control, starting with main engine cutoff, or MECO, then stage separation, SES-1, and fairing separation. MECO is where we shut down all nine M1D engines on the first stage. Then stage separation is when the first and second stages of Falcon separate from one another. And second engine start one, or SES-1, is when we'll light the MVEC engine on the second stage for the first time. Then less than a minute later, the fairing will then jettison from the second stage, as it's no longer needed to protect the payload once we're in space. So, Let's keep an eye out for these events happening back to back, all coming up in about 10 seconds from now. Miko? Stage separation confirmed. Stage two startup. Good series of callouts back to back, which again were Miko, stage separation. Coming up next will be fairing separation in about 30 seconds from now. As mentioned earlier, we will be attempting to retrieve these fairing halves once they fall back to Earth. They'll be taken back to shore by our ocean recovery vessel, Doug, once they fall back down to Earth. And we should be hearing that call out for fairing separation in just about 10 seconds from now. Fairing separation confirmed. There's a good call out for fairing separation. And just keep in mind that our views right now look really, really grainy because it's dark outside. We are T plus four minutes and 26 seconds into today's mission. The next major milestone is coming up just past the T plus six minute mark where you should, you should see the first stage's entry burn on your screen. To start the entry burn, we will relight three M1D engines on the first stage, starting with the center engine known as E9, followed shortly by the E1 and E5 engines. This helps slow down the vehicle as it passes back into the Earth's denser lower atmosphere. 
we need to slow the rocket down to reduce reentry forces, which then helps us recover and reuse the first stage. We're still over a minute away from the beginning of the entry burn, and you can check out the telemetry on the bottom of your screen and see that our second stage is still picking up speed and heading towards its destined orbit. On your right screen, you can see that engine burn, and the left side, you can see the first stage decelerating and making its way back to Earth. Reusability is key to lowering the cost of spaceflight and enabling more investments in critical space infrastructure. Though the Falcon 9 first stage that is supporting today's mission is performing this entry burn for the first time tonight, the payload fairings are already flight proven, with one half flying for its 27th time and the other half flying for its 28th time. We're about 20 seconds away from the beginning of the entry burn. If you like, you can check out the telemetry on the bottom of your screen, where you can watch the graphics light up as the engines do. Stage one FTS is saved. Stage one entry burn startup. There's a call out for entry burn startup on the Falcon 9's first stage. The burn is set to last about 25 seconds and again is slowing down the vehicle in preparation for its final burn and landing. Stage one entry burn shut down. And there's the call out for entry burn shutdown, the completion of the Falcon 9 first stage's entry burn. Coming up next will be the first stage's landing burn. Stage which, 2 FTS has saved. Which is going to start a little over a minute from now. The Merlins on the Falcon first stage are optimized for sea level, and these achieve 190,000 pounds of thrust each during ascent and descent. The single MVEC engine on the second stage has a much wider nozzle and is optimized to operate in space, producing over 220,000 pounds of thrust in vacuum. Coming up next, we'll start our landing burn on the first stage, followed quickly by the MVEC engine shutdown on the second stage. Coming up next, in about 40 seconds, we'll have the start of that landing burn of the first stage. The landing stage burn... Stage one, transonic. The landing burn is the final burn of the Falcon 9 booster, used to reduce the remaining speed of the vehicle for a gentle and precise landing on our drone ship, a shortfall of gravitas. And we should be hearing that call out for the first stage landing burn in just a stage few minutes. Stage 2 is in terminal guidance. Stage 1 landing burn. Good call out for landing burn start on the Falcon 9 first stage. And this is the final burn that this booster will see before touching down on a shortfall of gravitas. Stage one landing leg deploy. Stage one landing confirmed. There's the callout for a successful landing of our Falcon 9 rocket. This was the first launch and landing for this first stage. Nominal orbit insertion. Good callout too. A great way to cap off this early morning mission. As we mentioned at the top of the show, at our customer's request, we will be ending our live coverage now that the booster has landed. So let's wrap up tonight's broadcast. All of us here at SpaceX want to thank our customer, Amazon. We also want to thank the Eastern Range and Federal Aviation Administration for supporting this mission. If you're interested in more launch coverage, be, to sure, be sure to check out SpaceX.com slash launches for the most up-to-date information. And remember to follow at SpaceX on X. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you again soon. <laughs>